Hi everyone, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. I'm your host, Dr. Heather Shah. On behalf of Calvas, I would like to welcome all of you to this webinar. Thank you very much for joining us. Today we have another very interesting topic and I'm really honored to welcome and introduce our distinguished guest speaker who is going to talk about the conducting research in the new normal. Since the world is changing and evolving, we need to equip ourselves accordingly. A really very interesting topic and I'm sure you will learn a lot from this session because we have an expert with us and you will get the best insight, right guidance and suggestion about all these things. So stay tuned because in amazing stuff are coming ahead in this session. So before we start, I would like to thank Alwas for arranging such enlightenment sessions for their support and providing such a wonderful platform. The aim of Calvas is to give you the opportunity to connect and interact with world-renowned speakers, academic leaders, teachers, experts, professionals, and businessmen to learn from their experiences, recommendations, suggestions, and tips which will create an impact and will enable you to learn and develop yourself in order to grow and transform individually as well as to contribute to the world in a positive way. As our slogan is, come, learn, and share knowledge. So today we have an amazing person as guest. He's a wonderful person, a well-known person in academia with vast experience from a leading institution. He's a great human being. We always see him while contributing to the world and is always ready to share his knowledge. So let me introduce him formally. He is a senior lecturer at the Department of Social and Departmental Sciences, University of Putra, Malaysia. He obtained his PhD in the field of community development and tourism from the University of Putra, Malaysia. His research mainly focused on community-based tourism, indigenous tourism, sustainable tourism practices, and culture tourism studies. In addition to that, he has delivered keynote speeches in various countries, including China, India, on contemporary issues of sustainable tourism. Moreover, he is also the honorary treasurer of ASEAN Tourism Researcher Association and visiting professor at Lyceum of the Philippines University. He has published extensively in reputable academic journals in tourism and community development areas. Apart from active research involvement, he is also involved in community development projects, mainly in the rural area of Malaysia, by creating community capacity using tourism as a tool. And last but not the least, he is a wonderful speaker, author, teacher, researcher, professional, and above everything, a great human being. So please help me in welcoming our guest, Dr. Povannis Swaran, uh, thank you very much for joining us and welcome to the Calvas platform. Thank you. Thank you, thank Dr. You. Haider. Uh, thanks for inviting yeah. and thanks to Calvas. Uh, I think it's a noble uh, intention okay, to, to serve or to share knowledge, uh, not only to share, but also to receive. I always believe knowledge is exchanged uh, and uh, we hope to have much uh, engagement with the audience here. Okay. Uh, you can share the uh, yeah. Thank you very much. It's really a pleasure to have you, uh, Doctor. Uh, we have seen you uh, while performing on different platform and contributing to the world. And we had received requests to invite you as well to share your knowledge with them. And uh, a soft reminder to the audience that uh, Prof will be presenting and he will leave uh, time for question answer session at the end of the session. If you have any question, you can write in comment section or you can email us on info at the rate of Carl Walsh. So let's get started. Over to you, Doctor. Thank you. Okay. So the topic uh, was given to me, conducting research in the new normal. Okay. Uh, I, I, I will try to angle it. I will try to uh, do it from my experience perspective the past two or three years uh, rather than uh, facts which you can already see from the from the net uh, or, or through talking to uh, your colleagues or friends. Uh, I believe there are academicians and also students, especially postgraduate students, when you talk about research uh, here. Okay. Let's see uh, if uh, this can be uh, beneficial okay, uh, to you, if you can employ some of the strategies that I use. Otherwise, uh, you can also suggest to me later, okay, uh, you, you can, it can be done in a, in a much more effective way. Thank you. And uh, as you know, uh, it's about 442 million cases uh, already with uh, death of 6 million 
worldwide. On top of that, we have the recent uh, uh, Russia-Ukraine war and many more conflicts to come. Okay, uh, and what is the impact on research? As you, uh, as you, as you know, this is not the first time. The pandemic is uh, not the first time. This is the sixth one in the past hundred years. And every time we manage to come out of it, and uh, we we manage to handle it. And similarly, research uh, can we stop doing research? Can we just take a break? Okay, two years. Uh, can we have a break? I can't be. I won't be able to do research properly. This this are the, this is the key question. Okay, I will try to. Uh, I will try to. Uh, go through uh, some of my experiences and. Uh, the paradigm shift, and uh, before that, uh, if you see the okay, if you see what is what has happened during and what is happening during the pandemic, uh, in terms of mindset, uh, many of us go through isolation, stress. Okay, uh, we are we are, are demotivated. What is going to happen to me if you are a researcher or if you are a student? What uh, when am I going to finish my study? Okay, I cannot collect data properly i cannot go to my campus right if you are a if you are a, a academician if you are an academician uh, what is next when am when am i going to complete this particular study this research can i help my students can i graduate i can't even uh, freely move because of this pandemic anxiety is the future concerns are very very important uh, i'm not even married so when am i going to get married i thought i want to finish my studies first i'm going to go I'm, I, I will settle uh, with my uh, other other aspects of my life, right? So these are the uh, you know these are the uh, key concerns. And in terms of learning space, it has changed, right? Uh, massively. Uh, we used to do research. If you are from the science uh, uh, side, uh, hard science, you go to the lab. You need the equipment. You need the environment. You need the facilities to do your research. And if you are from social science, I'm, I'm a social scientist, right? I, I don't circulate my questionnaire online. I need to see the community and get information from them. So I need to talk to my respondent. How am I going to do research? Right? It has changed. And support. And if you see funding, uh, major contributors, major funders have stopped funding. Because one thing, the organizations suffer uh, due to COVID-19 financially so they wouldn't want to fund right and uh, on top of the universities delay funding because they know you cannot travel this restricted movement and all right scholarship and many things are uh, you know a little bit delayed in terms of uh, research data collection i just told you uh, it's a little bit difficult if you are an ethnographer how are you going to go into community immerse stay with them and there is restricted movement and many uh, SOPs to follow, right? And connectivity, okay? Many things have changed. And uh, as I mentioned, uh, but academicians, okay? academicians uh, struggle with undergraduate classes. This is something new. Uh, I think Dr. Haider might, uh, might agree with me. Uh, when, when the thing hit us, pandemic hit us, it's something unique for us to see the screen for several hours a day to teach, to talk to our students, right? It is something unique for us. This was at the beginning, right? This was at the beginning very, of the pandemic. Right? Very true, Prof. So, 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 so what, what uh, I, I try to emphasize, what I try to do is I try to do from, I try to move from pedagogy towards shitagogy, not even andragogy. Right, pedagogy is teacher oriented. I teach, you listen. Right now, with this online platform, right, if I do that, right, the, the immersion level of the students might not be there. So, we need to empower the students, engage them. I, I'm not going to go into this very much on teaching, I'll be very much into uh, postgraduate and research projects. So it was. It is very much on uh, self-determined learning. I couldn't see some of the words here. Uh, I think due to the platform, uh, it has, it's missing. Uh, change supervision paradigm, right? And ten change research paradigm are two things, two strategies that uh, I think we can we can uh, consider, right? 
supervision paradigm in terms of uh, pedagogy. If you are a teacher, if you are an academic here, uh, be prepared to empower students. It's time for us to trust them and make them to do themselves, especially postgraduate, right? Uh, be a coach rather than a teacher is what I employ. Be a coach. There's, a, there's an issue with problem statement for a student. Uh, I don't tell the answer. I ask, okay, what can be done better? Questioning technique, right? Uh, as, a, as a coach of action learning, as a certified coach of action learning, I found this was very useful. Uh, rather than telling them what to do, asking them what can be better for you. How we can address this in a group discussion mode, which I'll show you some pictures in a while. And revisit paradigm. I will also explain this later. Uh, how can we shift from a uh, chick? Our ontological belief from 100% uh, being uh, you know, a positivist or, or constructivist, uh, how we can go towards pragmatist right, approach. And uh, I just explained this coaching can be one questioning technique. And this is what uh, I will try to skip the facts and I'll try to explain what I have done. Right? I think the facts you can read from Google. Uh, this happened to me right uh, in the beginning. This, this is from one of my students. Uh, I'm a PhD student who just started my first semester in April 2020. For information, this was a time that uh, you know, we slowly get to know about the pandemic. Right? COVID-19, but it has started the beginning of 20, uh, 2020. Uh, right? uh, in December 2019, I was in China to give a talk and uh, I, I couldn't see anything. Uh, China was just normal. And in January, they saw the cases to rise and other countries, you know, uh, January 2020 and uh, in Malaysia it was like March or April when it, it, uh, it, it became, you know, we, we could see the true colors of the, of, the, of the virus, right? Then a lot of problem for the students. Okay? However, I'm already doing online learning and had several sessions with my supervisor. I have also presented my problem. So, with my student here, you know, he, he presented his problem statement just like this. I called other PhD students. Let, let us all learn together. Let us all learn together. Let us all give back, give feedback together. But if it is just a face-to-face -face session, I might be seeing the guy, uh, you know, in my room, at my office, and giving him the answer. So to engage others also, to motivate others also, we move together, not as an individual. Uh, this is what has happened. And uh, uh, this student is now waiting for his final viva, right? Uh, within two years, uh, everything is done, right? And uh, another case, uh, this is another student from China, okay? Um, he was uh, hoping for his proposal defense and he was quarantined 28 days in Shanghai. He was in Malaysia, in our, our, our university. Uh, due to COVID at the time, right? He went back to his country, but he got stuck and he still managed to present, right? Uh, there was an option to delay, but uh, what what uh, we, 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 we try to tell our students is that proceed. It will never end. Don't think that COVID is going to end next month. It can stay there for next five years. So are we going to sit and wait? So the reason I show you is, uh, to, is also my learning not to stop, right? Uh, not to stop, and uh, you know these these things are also published in uh, newsletters. Okay, the experience of the student. Next one is uh, another case, another PhD student of mine, also waiting for Viva, uh, final PhD Viva. Uh, the student mentioned that I this is at very beginning. He doesn't know what is Zoom. He said I couldn't access access Zoom from China. I said what you have, I have WeChat. Come, let's discuss that. The learning must continue. It can be through WhatsApp, it can be through any platform that you have. I prepare myself. Uh, WeChat was very much new for me as well, right? I, I couldn't, uh, I, 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 it was also something new for me that time. Huh? This was in 2020. Now we are 2020. I'm talking about the beginning of the pandemic. Now we are well versed with the, with the pandemic and online tools. This was, this was a very beginning, right? So she finished three chapters uh, by discussing with the supervisor, by discussing with me through WeChat only. So this was uh, another case, another success story. And uh, 
earlier the earlier ones which i which i told you the experience that i had i had i changed my style of supervision and research right i have to uh, change myself according to the situation uh, so i couldn't be very much uh, you know selective towards the ones the, the way that i was doing all this while now in terms of uh, research paradigm in terms of philosophical belief uh, I, I believe it's high time to go into uh, pragmatism. Things have changed. Okay. Positivism, we, we test the existing phenomena. We test the existing theory. Can we employ positivism fully now? It's questionable because, especially if you do social science type of research, many things have changed. Can you, can you just absorb a questionnaire, a well-known questionnaire scale, published by a top researcher in 2015, cited by more than 10,000 people. Can you employ that now in 2022? Right? It, is, it is a bit difficult because the situation has changed. Right? And this is where I would like to suggest, which I've also practiced during the pandemic, uh, option for pragmatism. Pragmatism doesn't belong to one set of system. It is not quantitative, it is not qualitative. It is a mixture of both when we are able to fit the objectives of the study. Uh, we always uh, uh, need to remember our objective should be achieved no matter what is the approach. Right? So I'm sure you know about uh, uh, mixed method. Okay, I will skip this a little bit. Mixed method. Uh, uh, Data collection and data analysis in a single study, quantitatively and qualitatively, okay, in the same study to fit the objective. It can happen concurrently or sequentially, concurrently, same time or sequentially. After quantitative, then there's qualitative. Okay, uh, for this you got to read press work. Why? What is the reason? What is the reason uh, this paradigm is uh, suggested when we don't have certain solid case for our study if you are a student doing your phd and you don't have certain solid case and as i mentioned later the existing questionnaire or the existing theories are pre-covid 19 theories how can you employ these theories just like that now why not do for an example sequential exploratory qualitative first then quantitative explore explore a little bit the situation now right there are three uh, types of mixed method. Okay, uh, you may want to consider later. You can read, and uh, some of the windows open. Okay, some of the research areas. I'm just concentrating on tourism. You can just try to self-reflect according to your field, right? You can you can just see what are the stakeholders need support from your research, customers, your purchasing intention change, their, their behavior consumption change, their attitude. Yeah, vaccination, digital certificate, passport, travel pattern, right? These are the study areas. Investors, what is the impact of COVID-19 on the business? How how the management styles uh, changed this past two years? Uh, what is about what what's about the survivability and growth of the organization? Challenges that they face. And if you see government, what are the policy changes happen? So many new policies, short term, mid term, long term policies introduced, right? And uh, what are the SOPs? Uh, as the country is endemic, what is the contribution of the policy to revise the industry and the people? Right? What are the tourism? You know, if, if it's tourism, what are the recovery plans? Uh, studies can involve this kind of areas. The service providers, industry. Okay, many businesses go into hybrid. Right. So we can study this. In terms of employee work from home stress psychological effect right these are the these are the areas that can be considered and uh, the pictures look nice but these are the you know uh, my uh, as i mentioned i'll share some of the experience I, I go through i go to the community and collect data like i told you earlier but this was before pandemic i could freely go talk to the people in Malaysia, in China, in, in some other countries, right? 
I can freely travel. Now I couldn't travel. Right? Research grants are there, I couldn't travel. Right? What do I do? I need to deliver something to my funder. Right? I just take one particular project as an example. Okay? It's, it's a project funded by uh, a state in Malaysia, Sarawak, Sarawak in Borneo Island. It was funded by the state for, for them, for me to do a research on women empowerment and tourism. And uh, I wouldn't want to stop. I want to continue, even in pandemic, right? And uh, to understand what resources that the community has. It's a rural area. Uh, even within Malaysia, uh, Kuala Lumpur, I got to take two flights to reach this destination and a boat ride uh, to uh, reach this rural area, Tapi, Sarawak. Oh, I was very excited to go, but I couldn't go. Even within Malaysia, I couldn't travel. And uh, this is the main problem statement the study would like to address. Uh, the roles uh, contribution of women in rural area consistently ignored. And they contribute a lot to the industry, to the business, but ignored and they are not getting a limelight. Right? So I would like to study in this particular area. So the objectives of the study uh, to identify the resources they have. Can I do this online? I cannot. I need to go there. I need to see the resources they have. Right? To examine the community women empowerment level in utilizing promoting tourism resources in the area. Can I measure the level of women empowerment? I can online. I can. I don't have to go to the place. But what is the immersion level? Can I get the genuine answer from the uh, rural community? It's a bit difficult. I can get, but uh, I face difficulty in terms of internet connectivity from the rural area. I was in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia, and this place is in a rural area of the country, very much rural area, right? So, but I was very eager to do the study. Uh, yeah, Malaysia. qualitative uh, method. We use snowball sampling, but what we did was. Uh, I'll show you the picture before I go to the seven years. We did online. I found, I managed to find a student who can speak the same language when Malaysia, but uh, this particular rural community, they speak a particular language. I managed to find a student who can do the online data collection first. I want to know a little bit information from there. So from our research team, I found a RA who can talk to the community. Okay. So who we collect, select from the community? First stage, we select the youths of the community because they are a little bit well versed with technology. They at least have a, a, a mobile phone and internet. So we select the young, uh, uh, young women, right, to in, to be interviewed. Then with the hope that uh, when the borders are when the state borders are reopened, then we can go and collect data from the remaining community members. So I we didn't stop. We didn't wait for the pandemic to over. Right. So from the uh, from the interview, the challenges, okay, challenges faced with conducting and approaching potential respondents. Of course, I, as I mentioned, uh, even within Malaysia, fourteen days quarantine. Right. This was uh, last year. A uh, language barrier. I mentioned. Right. Uh, I luckily, I managed to find a, a, a student who can talk the language and you know, uh, because the research funding is there, we can pay. We can pay the student to run, uh, conduct the research. To conduct the interview, especially, are uh, not the research. And this was uh, when the travel restriction lifted, right? And still, the cases are very high. The cases are very high. It is almost difficult for me as a mid researcher to go. So what I did, I empowered my student to go to go and collect data in this to this place. So data collection second phase was successfully done face to face, which we were still able to do. So the research is complete right now. So what type of uh, answers? So what I see, the earlier study which we did online couldn't let us immerse in the study. We couldn't get very genuine answer. And when my student went, this is one part of the answer. Right. When you go to the field yourself and talk to the respondents, you get genuine answers. 
So, uh, this is a comparative analysis that we can see here. Okay, when a when a study done on online mode, yes, we get some basic data, some key points, yes. But when the researcher goes to the ground, you get genuine solid data. So I was very happy to read the data. It's just one part of the data. So I will. I'm my next. What is what I'm going. Uh, I'm doing now is to compare the data which was collected during the height of the pandemic when we were not able to go at all. We did online collection still. Match that with this, and the research is over. So the research is not delayed. So we still get solid data. Okay, because you see some kind of. Uh, you know, information when you when you do the social science research, uh, when you deal with the people, especially rural communities, they are very shy to talk in front of camera, in front of the uh, computer or Zoom or any other platform. So when you talk to them, you get genuine answer because these answers are very important, especially when the when the research is towards policy because this study is funded by the government uh, towards it can support the existing policy or it can suggest the government to do better. So we need genuine data, solid data, right? So that is the thing. So this is one particular experience from my side during pandemic on how to handle, okay? How to handle research, uh, which I learned, okay? I didn't learn this from any book or what, but I learned through my experience as well. I can be wrong. So this is where I need maybe input from our audience later. You can, yeah, you can also advise us. Um, and uh, what we got to know from the particular study, uh, women in involvement in tourism, minority only, family commitment, not aware of the tourism activities and involvement. In the, they, they, are, they always get support from their spouse. They have difficulty in communicating and interacting with outsiders. They do not have much exposure in tourism sector. The Dayak women are only aware of the tourism activities through the local government. So some of some of the key issues, some of the key concerns that we found will be reported to the uh, government towards the betterment of the uh, uh, well-being of the community in, to involve in tourism. And as I mentioned, uh, what are the challenges that our team, myself and our team, went through during this, uh, this two or three years in conducting this particular research? Facing difficulty in obtaining and getting necessary resources in participation in the tourism sector. Uh, sorry, these are these are not uh, the the challenges that we face. I will show you that in, uh, next slide. These are the challenges faced by the community. This is the outcome of the particular study. Uh, the, the the area is very far from the main city. Okay, they have limited accessibility and infrastructure. They are hoping the researchers knowledge to the ministry. Lack of knowledge in empowering other. This is a common issue uh, whenever we conduct study with the uh, rural communities. A selected number of people only involved in the, uh, genuinely involved in the business or tourism activity. The others tend to sit and watch. Right? Uh, yes, technology. Uh, is it's not at a very good level at the rural area. This is another challenge from the research. And towards the end, and uh, yeah, challenges faced to run research project from uh, what what uh, learned in this past two or three years. Restricted movement, yes, but can we stop? No, we cannot stop. Right. Another thing, uh, gender. Uh, if you deal with rural communities. Uh, especially this study, I use uh, you know, women empowerment. Uh, rather than me talking to the women respondents, I need to have a research assistant or co-researcher who can communicate with them to get genuine answer. They might not give me proper answer. I don't know how many of you face this. If, if yes, you can share with us later. Yes, I did my study also, sir, uh, in my country. Uh, when I when I talk to opposite gender, I do I couldn't get solid answer. That's another thing. And accessibility, these are the challenges, uh, especially when you do rural area studies, you deal with community, communities in the rural areas. Accessibility is always a problem. Right? Language can be a uh, problem, right? Uh, same country can have uh, many languages, right? And neutral. Sometimes, sometimes we get, we tend to get answers which are against the government. 
how can we neutral we be neutral in reporting that that is very important thing. many times we get uh, uh, answers like okay government is not supporting us but as a researcher working in like me let's say i'm working in a government organization can i hide the truth but i need to tell in a nice way for the betterment of the government and also people right i still need to report that that government is doing but not doing enough to the people that's the outcome of the study what is the thing that the government did? what are the things that government is doing in the village what are the things missed so in a nice way in a diplomatic way to be uh, uh, explained the report and head of the community is very important uh, whenever we do research we always approach the head of community first rather than going into other respondents because clearance for them is very important budget is very important right uh, budget and claim process i can tell you one particular uh, experience since we don't have a lot of money to spend for travel we cannot travel and the university when they gave us the, the government when they gave us the grant and it's recorded in the university grant system the money will go into certain vote you cannot claim for other votes for an example so for an example let's say there's 10000 us dollars for travel expenses but i cannot claim this money we are not traveling very limited travel only a research assistant travel and the cost is only $1000 i want to utilize the $9000 so i need to properly write a letter to the university research management transfer my money to professional services i can use for other matters i can use to pay my respondents i can do for online data collection and all those things so sometimes it can be troublesome so i the reason i tell you is i also i also see some of my colleagues uh, hey why your research money funding is still left you see i have uh, accommodation and travel expenses is not claimed a big amount of money is there why not you take the money you can actually write to the relevant authorities take the money from this particular vote put in another vote and you can claim still make the research run don't wait for the pandemic or we we cannot blame pandemic like right? how long we going to blame pandemic right and uh, yeah empowerment of the community is essential Uh, from these particular studies and other particular projects that go through, and sustainability pro- of the project is very important. So when you empower, when we empower our students or the communities, uh, the sustainability can be achieved because that's when genuine participation happens. So with that, uh, I would like to thank everyone, uh, and uh, if you have any questions. Uh, to me or Dr. Haider, uh, please go ahead yeah. or any opinion or any question, opinion, so that we all learn together. Thank you. Yes. Thank you very much, uh, Prof. It was so nice to listen to your presentation, wonderful explanation and the powerful content. And I love the way you started with the COVID-19 and uh, then you talked about the mindset that, yes, it is going to be there, how you are going to respond to it. and then what are the different challenges to it and i love your quotation that yes things happen but you keep on learning and how you are going to manage yourself and then you shared the success stories of your own students that was so amazing to see the different photograph and that's the really uh, kind of motivation for the people that yes such student they kept on doing their activities even though they were facing a lot of challenges and you were talking about the one of the student who was uh, quarantined for 28 days it's a great sacrifice but again without sacrifice we cannot be a successful and very true uh, you have mentioned uh, the problems for the researchers you yourself uh, were visiting to the and then there were restriction on movement indeed a very difficult and challenge uh, uh, for the researchers uh, who are in the field taking the uh, respondent uh, views regarding the different things uh, and so much so and you really talked about the uh, uh, project funding and so many things yes there were a lot of challenges but i love your quotation that challenges would be there how you are going to cope with them that's the most important thing things are there and uh, i love your content in a way that you mixed up with so many uh, pictures uh, to keep us engaged and uh, to learn and we were excited to see further that what is coming up what is coming up next because the uh, things were so nice and you, you have rightly mentioned 
And th this was one of the questions as well regarding the online uh, data collection, which you have highlighted multiple times in your presentation. But since that student has emphasized to ask the question, I will definitely ask that question for further your elaboration. So really wonderful presentation, wonderful energy you have, uh, and really very captivating uh, presentation. Thank you very much. Should we start with the first question, please? Yes. OK. Uh, the first question they want to ask that, uh, Prof, uh, guide us, what are the new approaches to expand your research network, particularly in this COVID-19 situation? What strategies do you recommend? Yes, please. Uh, can, you, can you please uh, specify a little bit, Dr. Haider, uh, network, is it? Uh, how, how is it? The research please? network, they want to ask that, how can we collaborate oh. with the researchers at different places since there is a movement restrictions. Uh, so they just want uh, your tips regarding how can they expand their research network through collaboration. Yes, please. Okay, okay. very good question. Uh, these yeah. are the good things of COVID-19. These are the good things that we are able to, you know, uh, connect through virtual platform, right? Uh, I think this was not the case before pandemic, right? We were, we were in our own bubble, right? We were in our own place. COVID-19 opened the door for us to communicate. You know, uh, in my time, uh, these two, three years, uh, I, I could, I shared the same platform with the top researchers in my field. I was very fortunate. I think without COVID-19, that there wouldn't be a, you know, uh, that wouldn't be possible, right? Virtual platform, there are so many virtual platforms like this as well, right? That, like this, uh, that uh, conducted by, uh, you know, Talwas and Dr. Haider, right? Virtual uh, doors are open. And uh, uh, another thing uh, for uh, for students, since you asked for, particularly for students, why not engage external co-supervisors? Why not engage external co-supervisors, right? Uh, previously, uh, this was not an option because when you have your PhD, uh, you know, when you when you join your PhD or master's in a particular university, you have your main supervisor in the university, that's okay. Course supervisor is also from the department or another department from the university. Now, as you know, there's lots of exposure. So lots of professors are talking, so you can approach them. Why can you be my course supervisor? I'm studying in this particular university. Can I propose? We do this, right? We do this in our university you know, for students. So I'm suggesting uh, if you want to expand the network, uh, co supervisors from another continent or another platform, like a well-known uh, figure in the particular area, you can approach. And by having the co supervisor in your team, it's also a connection for you to also do publication, right? And many other opportunities. Thank you very much, uh, Prof. Such a wonderful answer. And really, that's uh, what we... Uh, used to hear from the different guest speaker that these are the advantages of the technology and particularly the uh, good side of the pandemic that we are now more connected than ever because we are doing these sessions with you uh, at very uh, in a convenient way and people are learning from each other what you have also referred in your presentation that collectively we produce more better and collectively we grow more so the same way Yes, uh, uh, because of the pandemic now, the, the virtual platforms are performing very well and they are contributing so that they could know. And the same we are doing is uh, connecting the speakers, the guest speakers with the students and researchers so that they can connect them later on for future learning as well. Very nicely you have mentioned and you have given a wonderful tip of having co-supervisor in order to grow further and to learn further. Wonderful. Uh, thank you very much for such a wonderful answer. Uh, we have another very interesting, uh, that's what you have covered in your uh, presentation as well. But since uh, your more elaboration would be a beautiful thing to, for that. And the question is, uh, dear Prof, nowadays we rely on online data collection, which has again limitations, as you mentioned in your presentation as well. Please share your experience and advice on it how to justify it in research proposal defense or thesis defense while collecting the data online? How we are going to justify it? Please uh, share some uh, tips with us. Thank you. Good, good question. Good question. It's not a crime to go for online data collection. I'm not saying online data collection is wrong. 
okay online data collection is can you know it is doable you know it's allowed right even uh, i think my students are also doing online data collection but what i try to say is for certain type of studies especially when we deal with cultural elements or community related studies the projects that i show online data collection will not give you genuine information genuine data right so for that kind of studies we got to go there but online data collection i need, i know majority of us will still do uh, you know survey uh, which can be transferred now to online but what is uh, what is uh, required is as i mentioned earlier how reliable is your skill especially now how reliable is the well established skill from the existing studies pre pandemic and how reliable are the if you can say sir i am taking a scale from an existing study okay this the paper was published in 2021 after covid 19 and how reliable is the study as well so why not why not combine a little bit of qualitative at the beginning of your study to verify your questionnaire if you are in social science i uh, uh, i believe you are you know okay social science you have set up questions right you select you are doing quantitative you don't develop your questions yourself right it's it's theory testing so you got to take from variables that you pluck from several theories right and then from the variables there are several questions so what i try to say is rather than blindly rather than simply taking the question employ sequential exploration method by creswell by integrating a little bit of qualitative in the in the beginning talk to your respondents get some qualitative answers take the answers match with the existing scale by jonathan 2019 can be remodel re you uh, know adapt again change accordingly then do your online data collection then you justify your study then the study can be solid i hope that answers uh great yeah. wonderful answer very nicely you have given this answer and you gave our example which was so wonderful to explain it further and that's why i asked because you have already explained it but uh, just for the sake of that student we asked this question for your further elaboration thank you uh, one last question and a lot of students uh, master students uh, they are concerned with that and they want to know your thoughts on it dear prof please guide us regarding the funding opportunities most of our seniors they got the offer letters but due to pandemic the funding was stopped and they were not invited to the different countries how do you see our future in next one year regarding the funding opportunities uh, please tell us the both the dark and the brighter side yes bro thank you i think i think uh, i'm not not spread i must to predict this we i am also waiting what's going to happen next right <laughs> so but one thing one thing for very sure one thing for very sure this is not the first time that this pandemic is happening okay this kind of situations funding can be very limited why organizations don't do well they tend to save their money they tend not to spend right that's why funding is a little bit difficult now but the good thing is history taught us that pandemic will be over right i uh, remember uh, the previous ones right from uh, ebola sars right a uh, name it mers right uh, the uh, and other pandemics and world war 1 world war 2 pali bombing many things right uh, even war related things right things will be over a matter of time matter of time only time time is the answer right so what we can do now what we can do now can we do something without funding Can we do something without funding, right? Happened to me. One of the funder, I received the offer letter for a particular research, but the funder mentioned that we cannot give you funding. But can you still do? I was very angry, but I said I will. I can still do. I think I do at a minimal level. Whatever I can do, right? 
so that could be one one uh, way for you to not to stop uh, you know uh, you know when you stop it becomes very difficult so you, if you ask uh, many successful people uh, they don't stop whether it's a good thing or bad thing they just proceed they just go on right so uh, that's an answer so rather than just stop and thinking you know uh, so uh an an empty mind is a i i don't play for bad things to play right it's the playground for a for bad element you be thinking uh too much about your future so just go on with whatever we have just go on proceed with whatever we have that could be one uh answer for funding but it'll be okay back i believe uh with this uh, uh omicron it's not life threatening right that, that that's a good news that's a good news but uh, average is, cases per day is like 2 million mm-hmm. as compared to only 500000 last year the cases are very high so the death rate is slightly better go ahead dr mm-hmm. haider yeah thank you very much again for such a wonderful answer and you have given the multiple examples of different the pandemic that have come and gone but we survived and uh, we will be surviving because uh, we need to know how to cope with the situation and i love your wonderful statement that yes you must keep going and do not stop and if you if you proceed so definitely you are going to get your destination and i believe that's the wonderful thing uh, you have said it that yes sir and uh, you are very optimistic we are very optimistic and uh, we pray for the wonderful uh, future ahead and we say that yes we are positive and we are hoping that things would get to back to the normal and there would be funding and there would be again the new normal world and we will be roaming around as a uh, researcher and will be having funding again so thank you very much for that uh, at the end of the session uh, we ask each our guest what is your message to the world as a teacher researcher trainer learner professional and educator yes please Uh, my message uh, i'm not a big person to give message or advice but uh, what i would like to say is uh, we have to help each other in the difficult situation help mm-hmm. anyone we see that if we can help we help and uh, that person can help another person correct or not just like what dr hyder is doing is sharing knowledge asking other people to come do sharing knowledge uh, you know and uh, we we help any you know uh, there could, could be somebody in need of the thing that we have so we keep helping in this situ- difficult situation if we can and uh, yes. keep moving that's another message keep keep going don't stop yes yep. thank you very much prof once again you have given two wonderful uh, message to the world that yes help each other and that's the wonderful message and i believe that helping others paving the way for the people the way will be because uh, uh now the science says what energy you give uh, to the world it will come back to you in a different ways so the same way if you are helping someone somebody else will be helping you if that collectively we go together and uh, this is how the the human has progressed that they help each other and they care for each other and this is why this world has become a good place and we have to leave the good place for upcoming generations as well because that is our responsibility and this is what the sustainable development goals are as well so indeed uh, conducting a research in the new uh, normal best practices and strategy uh, what a wonderful content and presentation the uh, uh, our prof has shared with you is so wonderful uh, we uh, suggest you that please do follow the distinguished guest speaker through his research work and you can email him for future learning and guidance he is very generous and always ready to help the people we will be providing you his email address and social media account you can contact him for future uh, collaboration as well moreover wonderful explanation and powerful content which the great speaker has already elaborated will help you and learn how to cope with the situation so that is all we have time for today thank you once again dr pavan niswaran and uh, i would also like to thank our audience who joined us if you have any additional question 
about information shared today, you can email us or you can connect to the speaker directly through his email or social media. Uh, thank you all for your support and liking our sessions. Stay tuned as many sessions are on the way. Please do not miss any session until next.